Hi everyone, this is Grandmaster Eugene Perlstein and this is my featured video post for ChessSummit.com. ChessSummit is a really great website for everybody who is aspiring to become a master thanks to the effort of Isaac and Isaac himself is a strong player and I really want to support his website so I'm gonna do a little video explaining to everybody how to play the English using concepts and not variation. What do I mean by that? Let's take a look. This is a game that I played recently against a relatively strong master. He's about 2350. And after the moves c4, e5, I normally don't play the English opening as white. You know, I maybe played the English about less than 10 times of my life. But I do play the accelerated dragon which is e4, c5, knight of 3, g6. So I basically use the concepts from the accelerated dragon and I use them in the English and I play the move g3. Notice that it's exactly the same opening except because I'm white, I'm up a tempo. And after the move knight c6, bishop g2, g6, we transpose to an opening that I'm really familiar with as black, the close Sicilian, except here I'm white, and I'm gonna play the move knight c3, bishop g7, and here white has many different setups after the move d6, d3 rather d6, I can play knight of 3, I can play e4, knight g2, but the move that I chose, I believe, is the most flexible move, e3. So I don't wanna block my bishop, while at the same time I'm going to develop my knight on e2. The reason why my knight on e2 is more flexible is I know that in the future black is thinking to do pawn storm, some kind of f5, g5, and f4. Well, with the knight on e2, I'm going to have another attacker or defender, f4 square, and if I play f4 myself, this is going to be a really nice way to break up black's attack. So my opponent plays f5, knight g2, knight of 6, so far so good, castles, castles. And here, again, I don't know variations that well, but I use concepts, understanding of chess, to come up with a plan. Well, you look at my bishop, it looks at the queen side, right? My pawn structure, my pawn chain, d3, c4, is a little bit as well pointing to the queen side. That means my strategy here and my long-term plan is to go for b4, b5 push to try to expand that range of the bishop and create counterplay on the queen side. So I play the logical move rook b1. My opponent plays bishop e6. And here comes the first critical moment of the game. A lot of low rated players simply play the move b4 without much stop, right? That's the natural follow up of rook b1, right? Well, this would be a big, big mistake. Absolutely terrible move. Now, for those of you who play the black side of the close Sicilian, probably know that. Typically, the idea here is when the bishop's on e6, there is a knight on f6, queen on d8. Here, my opponent is threatening to play the move d5. So, if he is allowed to play d5 in one go, my advantage is pretty much non-existent. I have a backwards pawn on d3, he has a very nice direct attack, and the move b5 would pretty much be useless here. He can just simply drop the knight back. I really don't have much of an attack here. So this is the type of position you really have to know what to do. And since I understand concepts, I use the concept of prophylactic thinking. So the move here is knight to d5. Simply stopping his counterplay. I'm never afraid of knight takes because of pawn takes. Simply forks the bishop and the knight. So, and if he takes me with the bishop, I was gonna do c takes d, knight back. And here, the classical way to play this position is to play e4. Even though I'm locking up my bishop, in reality, I'm opening the other bishop up, and I can play later on either f4, or even more solid f3, bishop e3, and then just start pounding on that backwards pawn, the pawn c7, which is a clear target. Most importantly, without the light square bishop, black doesn't have any attack so let's go back to the game 
So in this position, my opponent plays logical move queen d7. And now I have nothing to worry about. F4 move can never be played. I've got one, two, three, four, five pieces in that square. And now I follow up in my logical plan b4. He plays knight d8, trying to prepare c6. Again, logical move b5, c6. I was going to play if he does that. He plays this awkward move knight e8, which I'm not quite sure what the idea is. Still, f4 can never be played. Too many attackers on the f4 square. And I simply expand with the kingside pawn push. Notice how easy it is to play as white. My opponent plays c6, the move I expected. And now I simply open up the b-file for my rook and drop the knight back to c3. So you might wonder, what did white achieve so far? Well, the most important thing is that, remember I said, if we split the board into half, halves, the king side and the queen side, black is really playing here on the queen side. Well, I've got the open B file, right? That's a nice bonus. I've got a very nice bishop here. His pieces are really awkward. And most importantly, my opponent doesn't have the typical king side attack. This move F4 is simply no good. Obviously, he is trying to create trouble on the king side. I have more than one way to punish him. I can just simply take with the G pawn. But honestly, I don't really want to ruin my pawn structure. Even though I'm up a pawn, that's not what I want to do. What I do, I, I want to take with the E pawn. And that's my idea. And then with the bishop. And honestly, he doesn't have enough compensation for the pawn. So white is just simply better. So that's why in the game, he tries to free one of the knights. Knight C7. I play A5. And this is a very important concept. When you have an A pawn that could potentially get all the way to A6, this is called a potential passed pawn. This is very important in a lot of middle game positions. And as you will see shortly, this pawn is basically the reason why I win this game. So he plays D5, logical move. He's trying to open up the center. Tempo move on the rook. That's why I did not develop the bishop. I anticipated that I may get the bishop on A3. Rook E8 takes take and now it's very important for me to realize one thing about this position end games are in white's favor that means if i trade queens he has absolutely no attack against my king while i still have all the trumps on the queen side that's why i played queen a4 this is a very strong move and if he tries to avoid the queen swap he allows the bishop bishop to penetrate to d6 notice this knight is really loose he can't really do anything. If he moves the knight, well, a6 is really ugly square. The d pawn is really weak, and black's position is going to collapse. So if he trades queens, I was going to do knight takes, opening up the c1 square for my rook, and then I have two beautiful open files. His knights are really paralyzed. I still have the d6 idea, bishop d6 for my bishop, and once again, it's hard to really come up with a good plan for black. So my opponent logically avoids the tra queen trade. And now I execute a really simple idea. Rook b7. Pinning up that knight. And the rook on the seventh rank is really important. I like this rook a lot. And I gave it a name. The, you know, really funny name from a video game that I think everybody knows. This is the... Rook that eats everybody. Let's see if you're going to come up with this name from a famous video game. And I call this the Pac-Man Rook. It's going to gobble up everything on the seventh rank. So that's why it's really hard for him to deal with my Rook. So he wants to trade off immediately. Well, here comes the second Pac-Man. And this is the point of my play. A logical move for him is trying to get some counterplay, right? So he tries to open up that bishop, but I say, thanks, but no thanks. I'm simply going to lock that guy up. And so far, everybody sees that black has absolutely no counterplay. Knight f4 is potentially coming up. This guy is weak. Yes, I temporarily locked up my bishop as well. But guess what? I can always free it up by going to f1 in the future. So he plays logical move g5. And here, a6 is sort of logical move as well. But I decided to come up with a better move, which I think is even stronger. Bishop c5. Now that pawn is a weakness. 
he plays a6 and now a very unusual quiet move rook to b6 it's rare that the rook is better placed on the sixth rank rather than the seventh rank but in this specific position it's actually very difficult for him to protect the knight almost impossible if he tries to move the knight well this rook is going to be hanging so his only option really is to kind of say yep my strategy failed miserably is black i'm going to give you the, the pawn and now it's a matter of technique remember i said the a pawn is going to win the game he plays this sort of move quickly bishop f6 simply trying to get the bishop closer to potentially protect the queen side and now white has a forced win this is probably the first moment of the game where i had to calculate more than two three moves deep and here I calculate a very long variation because it's pretty much forced. And this is another advice for everybody. You have to calculate variations that are forced to the very end. Don't stop halfway through, really calculate it out. So if you need some time, try to pause the video and see if you can figure it out. So in this position, why to move and win? And the move that I played here is rook takes b8. Some of you may say, wait a second, after rook takes b8, is this just simply a blunder? You're gonna lose your queen. If you move your queen, you're gonna lose the b1 rook. But in reality, white gets to sacrifice a queen. Queen takes b8, x clam. He has to take it. Rook takes check, king f7. And now remember the lonely soldier, the a pawn, now a6. And black is completely hopeless. A7, A8 is coming up. But if you calculated that far, you only did half a good of the job. Why? Because you have to ask yourself a question. Can my opponent create any counterplay while I'm running that pawn down the board? And the answer is yes. He can play this move queen A4. So if you saw that far, you're already a strong chess player. If not, you really have to work on your calculation technique. a7, queen d1, I had to foresee this, bishop f1, and now his only hope is this move f4, trying to set up a mate in that. Yes, he allows me to queen, I'm up a whole rook, right? And in addition, I'm also up a whole piece. But after the move bishop h3, only forced moves can guarantee white victory. Because if I don't give a check or checkmate, he's simply going to snatch that bishop with me. Luckily enough, white has more than one win. I found the simplest check, king g6. Notice that king e6 runs into queen c8. Checkmate. He has to go here. Check. And now the game is pretty much over. If he goes king f5, then king, queen check here has to go all the way back to g6. And then I just snap that pawn with mate. He goes here, check, and now he resigns, made in one. So in conclusion, the key for everybody is don't just memorize openings. Try to really understand, understand concepts. If you understand concepts, you will be a much better chess player and you will be able to be a versatile chess player and use ideas from one opening in a totally different position. Thank you and good luck to everybody on Chess Summit. This was Grandmaster Eugene Perlstein.